So in today's video, I'm going to discuss why all engineering and scientist people should learn MATLAB as a programming language. And essentially MATLAB is a higher level programming language, which is specially made for engineers and scientists. And it performs a large number of functions, which are typically required in these domains. Now I mentioned previously that when you are dealing with engineering software, it is very important not to make mistakes and introduce bugs in the software because typically these softwares do not have a beta version. Whatever software you are developing is probably the one which is going to be finally deployed on a system and is going to be used to make design calculations. So for example, you are designing a software and then maybe predicting the path of a spacecraft which is supposed to go to Mars. And if you make a mistake here, then you know you may send the spacecraft off to Saturn or worse, it may be somewhere in between, it may, it may go off into the galaxy somewhere far away. So basically to avoid these kinds of mistakes, one of the things to do is to concentrate more on the domain expertise in the problem and less on the programming. And this is something which MATLAB lets you do. Now, when I was writing code in the 1990s during my PhD, we used to write a large amount of code in Fortran. And a lot of this code used to be simple things such as multiplying matrices, taking the transpose of a matrix, uh, inverting matrices, solving linear systems, solving differential equations, finding roots of equations, so on. And for all these particular situations, we had to call something which was known as, as a subroutine. And this subroutine later became a function in languages such as C and later. And these functions took over a lot of these tasks. Now what MATLAB goes further and creates is higher level functions. So for example, if you need to find roots of a polynomial P, then MATLAB has a function roots. If you want to find zeros of a function, then MATLAB has a function F0. If you, find to, if you want to find determinant of a matrix, then you can use det A debt bracket a close bracket uh, similarly eig a will give you eigenvalues of a matrix so you can do a plethora of these kind of things in matlab and you do not need to write codes or call functions and subroutines for each of these issues so let's take a simple problem which you often use in scientific computing which is a solution of a linear system such as ax equals b now you can very simply solve this by writing x is a backslash b. So essentially dividing these two things. And here you are working with vectors and matrices and essentially MATLAB has the capability to work with vectors and matrices. So you do not need to create loops in most cases. So though MATLAB provides you the functionality of using for loops and so on, in many situations you really do not need the for loops because you can work directly with matrices and vectors. Now let's look at some more issues which typically you do as a scientific uh, person. One is you need to solve typical differential equations. So again, you have uh, various solvers which are present in MATLAB. For example, you have ODE45, which is a very good solver for so uh, solving differential equations for non-stiff systems. Then there is ODE15S, which is a good solver for stiff differential equations. Now stiffness in differential equations is something which happens if two solution components vary dramatically based on the time scale. So in several problems such as rotor dynamics, we often encounter stiff differential equations and because of the presence of these differential equations, essentially the simple methods can create a lot of problems. So you need more complicated methods. Now the second important issue in scientific computing is partial differential equations and you have solutions coming from solvers such as PDE, PE. So this is typically a PDE solver. Now just to recapitulate your memory, PDEs essentially work on two variables, for example, X and T, so position and time, whereas ODEs typically work on one variable such as X or T. So in most of the engineering problems, these are the situations. Now, of course, MATLAB is a higher level programming language because it introduces many of these functions and in simple programming languages, you have functions such as sine, cosine, square root, log, and so on. But MATLAB has a higher level of functions by which you can do a large amount of things such as find roots of equations. You can find uh, 
solutions to differential equations and so on which are often the bread and butter of most people. Now while all this is positive some of the negatives of MATLAB are that it is a weakly typed language so it is not very stringent like some of the traditionally very proper languages such as Pascal and also it is uh, something which is more good for prototyping. And one of the things I like about MATLAB is that it has built in functions such as plot. For example, if you use plot x, y, then you can plot y versus x in a 2D line plot where x and y are vectors. Now, one of the reasons MATLAB is extremely popular among the student community and especially the graduate student and postdoc community is that it essentially lets you do the complete simulation and write a paper. So this is something which is the bread and butter business of most universities and essentially MATLAB lets you do the simulations, plot the graphs, import these graphs into LaTeX document as files and then you can write your paper straight away in LaTeX. So in fact most of the students prefer to use MATLAB here. Now one of the things which is positive for MATLAB is that most universities have a MATLAB subscription. So it is very easy to use MATLAB in a typical university setting. And also MATLAB versions for students are very reasonably priced and so this is also possible for students to use. Now on the negative side MATLAB can be slower than languages such as C. But again since you do not have to write all this huge amount of code and call functions and so on it's less likely that you will be making a lot of mistakes in MATLAB. So MATLAB is a very good software for prototyping and the first prototype of a particular engineering software could be written in MATLAB and then it could be converted into C or Julia or some other language. So these were some concepts I had as far as MATLAB is concerned. Now how to learn MATLAB? There are many tutorials on YouTube itself which you can use to learn MATLAB and there are also books on the topic. You actually do not need a lot of information to start with MATLAB. You can just learn a few commands and then you can actually start solving your problems. So most of the time when you are doing engineering problem, your actual problem finally leads to a mathematical problem, whether it is a solution of a polynomial equation or it is a particular system of the form AX equal to B or it is a differential equation which you need to solve with some initial conditions and so on. So once you have made this formulation in terms of the mathematics, that is you have converted your engineering problem into a mathematics problem, you can straight away go to MATLAB and get a very quick solution for this problem and there is less likelihood that you will introduce bugs at this stage. Now most of the MATLAB functions are pretty robust, so it is likely that you will get a good solution to this problem and there is a lot of support out there on the internet if you have difficulties in MATLAB. So many situations you can type out your particular problem on Google and you will be led to some particular web page where people have addressed that problem. Now beside these regular functions MATLAB has a plethora of toolboxes. So I personally have used the neural network toolbox, signal processing toolbox, fuzzy logic toolbox and some of these things. And these toolboxes essentially let you do a high level of mathematical computation without necessarily trying to write a code in all these things. So for example, if you are setting up a neural network, then again you can use the MATLAB neural network to do this particular problem and you can leave it to the neural network to use the different algorithms for this purpose. Now one of the negative aspects of MATLAB which I find with students is that sometimes students do not know the methods which are being used inside MATLAB. So I came across some students who when they were asked how did you solve this uh, particular problem said that uh, well I used roots function in MATLAB and they did not know whether this function was using uh, newton raphson method or second method or something like that. So this is something to keep in mind that whenever you are using some function in MATLAB just go into the help section and check out what is the precise algorithm and some of the details which are there in the particular function. And this is especially important if you are using a toolbox because if you are using a toolbox you should know what are the methods which are being used. For example, if a neural network is being trained using backpropagation, then you need to know that. Because it's very likely that if you are presenting this in your master's thesis, some professor is going to ask you these questions. And then you should not say, okay, MATLAB has selected all my uh, network architecture, the algorithm and all these things and so on. You need to at least know what is the basic architecture which has been selected, what is the 
method or mathematics which has been used and once you find the particular methods which are being used you can always go back to a book and figure out more about this method so this is very important for a research student that they do not use matlab as a complete black box but they use it as a tool to aid and speed up their research now finally i would say one of the drawbacks of matlab which i have come to uh, realize is that when students leave a university setting and they go to many companies and startups the companies and startups don't use matlab in many cases and this is probably because of the expensive and proprietary nature of matlab and many startups are typically using python so again that is something to keep in mind that though you may do a lot of matlab programming in your college days make sure that you know some python and you also have some expertise in using python for solving some of these problems so that will help you in your transition from the university system to some of the companies especially the small companies such as startup so again i hope this video was useful to you and please stay tuned to my channel for more videos on such topics thank you very much